welcome back to Back is by the Bay Soapery, and I'm Becca, your South Texas soaper. So hopefully the light is not in the way. Awfully bright over here. Um, just replace some of the bulbs. So what we're working on today, and this is actually uh, for a, spe a special customer, is I have someone who's allergic to coconut oil, and there's very few all um, substitutes that you can use for replacing coconut in your soap mixtures and your batters um, due to coconut has a really great lather. Um, so you need to find oils that are going to give the same kind of properties as um, as the coconut oil. And one really good substitute is babassu oil and uh, palm kernel flakes is from the palm fruit, which is not actually a coconut. It's a different fruit. Hey, how are you? So, wasn't feeling well. So, um, I've done a lot of soap making at home without the videos. I just didn't have the energy. But we're making these beautiful. Well, the lighting is just crazy in here. There it is. It's a rose clay unscented soap uh, with no coconut oil. So, a really good replacement is um your palm kernel oil flakes or babassu oil that's going to give you the same lathering properties i wasn't exactly happy with this batch um it lathers but just not as bubbly as i would like it to so i'm remaking that one um and changing up my recipe a little bit so i've got vanilla it was uh 25 percent olive oil 10 percent castor 35 percent uh beef tallow and 30% palm kernel oil flakes uh, because you, you need palm kernel oil flakes or babassu oil for that bubbly lather. Otherwise, you're going to have more of like if you've made 100% Castile soap with olive oil, you know that that doesn't have really a whole lot of bubbles or lather to it. Um, and so people who are allergic to coconut, those are two really good replacements. Um, the customer that I have has their use babassu oil and she's not sure if she's allergic to it but she's okay with palm kernel flakes so um that's what we're doing today and i've got a two pound recipe and let's see 30 three percent water now i did add uh some organic sugar for bubbles in my uh lye water but a tablespoon of our rose clay with some of the oils and i've got a tablespoon of kaolin clay mixed in over here and it was kind of cool in here so I had to reheat this a little bit up in the microwave so hopefully we're at the right temperature on the stove these were a really good buy never worked with babassu it's really a great oil I actually really like it but since she's never had it um and she's not sure if she's sensitive to it I want something she's okay with but these were some really cool molds that we got at Walmart so if, um in the valentine section these are some Make a great little facial bar. I thought these were a good size and fun to work with. I also did one that was coconut free with a, a tea tree oil um, and activated charcoal. So I'll probably do a video later on that one too, but it's pretty much the same recipe. And I'm not sure where I put my goggles, so I think I'll be okay. But anywho, always wear goggles, always wear. I'm just gonna zip that up a little bit. I was working on a um, hot process soap the other day uh, in the crock pot, and it just make sure if you're doing like a a rebat, you don't fill your crock pot almost to the top, which is what I did, and it like bubbled up in a lot of people's internets, I think too. So if you lose me, I guess come back. There's our um, rose clay, which is super good for your skin. And, I've, and we've been trying to get some more seedlings started for the garden because after this cool front passes, we'll be able to get more tomatoes in the ground. So that'll be fun. So that'll help make it a really nice white batter, adding a little bit of TD. And this is just. Um, a bottle that I use where I mix up um, one part, PD. I think I do 10 tablespoons and then I fill the rest with distilled water and just give it a good shake. 
This is a 16 ounce bottle. So. We had a good today's Wednesday, so it's Saturday. Nice Valentine's. Hopefully, we'll have some really nice weather again. I try to mix my clays with um, some water or distilled water or and my oils too, just. Um, Make sure there's no lumps in it. Now, I usually like to work with rice bran oil. But again, like I said, I'm making this for someone and she has never um, tried rice bran or babasu. So I went with something that we knew that she was okay with, which was the olive oil, the tallow, and um, castor, the palm kernels. So it's always fun tearing a soup for somebody. I don't know. I think I think it's fun. I like hopefully our internet's okay in the little little thin, huh? This is a little thick. too thick and I had to warm everything up and now it's just super fluid. We've uh, pretty much restocked our shop for springtime. I think there's just a couple more soaps I gotta make. Um, and I was gonna do a really fun um, avocado soap. I got some uh, New molds from Nurture Soap, where it's a little bit bigger ball. Um, and I figured that would make a really cool avocado pit. And two shades of green with an avocado pit would be really cool, I thought, for um, the next soap I wanted to do. Because I have not made an avocado soap in, like, probably two years. So... It's too hot in the house. My soap tends to trace really fast, and when it's cool like this, it takes a little longer. And whipped up a bunch of bubbles. So anyway, we're gonna pour it in the center. We did really well at the last two markets, and local support here was really, really super. And I did pretty good on Etsy, so probably a, this is like the third year I think we've had the Etsy shop up and running, and um, we've actually tripled our sales. So I was super busy, needless to say, this year. We're gonna just. Um, Unstable connection. Okay, we're going to do a figure eight and then I go around once. That's usually my swirl. Yeah. 
this is pretty cool. You do have a lot of light. I'm not a fan of track lighting. The bulbs replacing them is kind of a pain. Just going to try and get this one where it's not blaring at me. Now that I can't see. Hopefully it is. And it's just going to do uh, whatever it's going to do in the mold. And it came out really, really pretty last time. I like doing this kind of a pour. I'm just having some kind of wavy, swirly stuff going on. Now, I will put these in our oven, um, the clays. That will make the color pop a little bit better because clays can tend to really um, light and kind of pastel y. Um, so, when you put them in the oven like that, uncovered with the light on, it just keeps the temperature and even and it forces gel. And then you get these beautiful little pink swirls. I stamped it with a little rose on the back. There's this one back. I usually let it set up in the mold for about maybe 10 minutes. Extra water in there. Just trying to, um, before I put them in the oven. That way, they won't move around too much. And if you're interested in our chili recipe, I do believe I have it um, as a video. I think it's like carnivore chili or something like that. Um, we don't use beans or anything like that. It's just meat and mushrooms and peppers and tomatoes and stuff and seasoning. Pretty sure it's in the, my playlist somewhere. Just type in chili and it should pop up. It's a really good recipe. Um, on hut process and rebatching, uh, Valerie, I think her last name is Mosher from Nova Scotia, she'll take her molds and put them in the oven for about at like, kept my molds nice and warm and uh, when I was ready to pour my rebatch soap in to my molds, the molds were nice and warm and I got a, a much smoother look to my soaps when they came out. She's just uh, amazing at hot process, and I love watching her videos. She puts all kinds of nourishing ingredients in, and it's always fun to watch. What some mini samples with our heart? You know. Swirl that just a little bit more. Oops. That happens sometimes. Good thing there's nothing in it. There's the chili <laughs> in our pot. And then I'm just going to pour this in. Try to do it at an angle. That way I get like some kind of cool zigzaggy design going on.
And I haven't made a rose clay soap in ages. It's really, really good for your skin. I love using it as a facial bar. So this year, I finally was able to catch up with Walmart and their Valentines. I love these little heart molds, and I've only had one of them, and they always seem to sell out super fast. So this year, I was able to get in there and get a couple more of them. So every now and then, they have something different for the season. So it's always fun to check out Walmart, see what's going on. And your clay soaps are going to set up a little bit faster if you don't add a little bit of extra water or extra oils to mix with them because they are super absorbent. Um, I mean, I'm working with a slight water discount here, but then I, I added a little bit of extra just because I wanted to make sure this was going to stay fluid. And I know I was going to do a Harry Potter soap coming up. I just don't know what to send it with. So if you can below in the comments and let me know. I think that would be really fun. I'd like to do something with the Quidditch. Wow. Now it wants to just set up. Is it Az with Aztec? Aztec had a new fragrance that I hadn't seen called um, Dandelion Sweetgrass. Just came in today and it smells amazing. Um, it smells really, really good. So, I'm waiting, I think, for a stamp to come in. It's a dandelion stamp, so I can make that one because I just love dandelions. I was hoping it would smell good and I think it smells, it smells lemony and grassy and just kind of slightly earthy but i don't know how else to describe it it's really nice um so i'm kind of excited to try that one out i was the the kid growing up that like picked dandelions and cooked them up with some pasta outside with my little hobby lobby i mean not hobby lobby but um holly hobby kitchenette set that i had I was a weird kid. So pretty soap to make. Why is this one doing that? Okay. There we go. I know. I'm OCD about all that. It happens. So that's it. These are going to set up. Um, and then when they're firm enough to just kind of put on a tray, I'll put them in the oven. Show you guys. Um, this was the lather that I had with these soaps, and I really thought I would have had a little bit better lather with them. So I did increase increase these. But I don't do too many lather tests, so I'm going to show you guys. I just made this the other day, two days ago. So, it was, without having coconut oil, it makes it, this makes a really creamy soap. Um, and your bubbles are going to be small and tight. 
The palm kernel makes a nice hard bar too. Um, but I've increased the bubble so that it'll be, it's going to be a lot bigger. I mean, not that this will, I don't think this was hard to lather. It's really nice. But this is going to be a tight, smooth bubble on that one. So I'll show you guys the lather on these probably next week. my coconut free so, so I hope you guys enjoyed it um check back in when I have a little bit more time to make some more soaps I'm gonna be doing I think a Harry Potter one a dandelion one and the avocado one I'll pop in whenever It'll probably be more towards the evening when I go live again and thanks to you guys so much for joining me I'll see you guys next time here at Becca's by the Bay and I'll put my, all my links down below if you want to follow gluten-free, paleo, uh, kind of carnivore stuff. So if you're into that, uh, I post stuff like that. That's what we enjoy posting. So it's just stuff of what's growing and what we eat. Um, and our dog, Kiara, who's a little bull terrier, German shepherd. She's fun. So there's a couple of new photos on Instagram of her. And it's uh, Beck is by the Bay, I think, underscore soap, underscore treasures on Instagram. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me.